Hi again, my friends. Welcome back to the program. Andrew Richter, the television show. Always great to have you as you tune in every Thursday night, Channel 19, 6 p.m. to get the news and all the things that you won't find in your local paper, you will not find on the little puff pieces running on cable TV. No, you'll only find the hard-hitting news here on this program or at our blog, communitysolutionsmn.wordpress.com. Now, my friends, today I'm going to dive a little bit more into what is going on with the 2014 city budgets here in the northwest suburbs. Now, some of you who are uh, longtime watchers of this program, and I know there's lots of you out there, might be saying to yourself, haven't we heard this before? Have we not heard you go off on rants about taxation, city budgets, and all that, just as recently as our podcast a couple of weeks ago? Yes, I know that, my friends, but I have evidence that the audience of this program is growing at a rapid rate, and nothing can infinitely keep going up. So what I have to do is every once in a while here, and here at Season 6, Episode 201, I have got to stop pull back and explain things to people who are first time watchers of this program and explain why this program is taking off. We are taking over the Northwest suburbs here on Andrew Richter, the television show. Now, I've got to explain city budgets, what's happened, what's going on. So when you want to confront your city, you want to ask questions, you, trust me, the average citizen who dives into this knows more than the people who are on these city councils. You just, you've got to trust me here, okay? You just have to. Now, I want, I want to start with the city of New Hope. Yeah, you thought I'd start with Crystal, right? I'll get to it. I will. But I'm going to start here with New Hope. New Hope is a city that wouldn't know a good idea if it ran them over. I mean, it, it just I, I can't explain their budget without getting very angry. So if you're at home, go ahead, get out that bottle of Jack Daniels, put on some Almond Brothers, whatever you need to do to relax, and I'm going to explain what happened with their budget. They raised, now, now keep this in mind, in 2013, the city of New Hope got 32 grand in local government aid, $32,000, okay? They got over half a million they're getting in 2014. Now we were told by our heroes in St. Paul that, well, if we just charge $73 for a pack of cigarettes, somehow that's going to filter down to your city as a property tax cut, right? You know, through increased LGA. Well, guess what? That's not happening. You're not getting a property tax cut in New Hope. You are getting, they're getting $500,000 in local government aid. So they're getting 16 times as much money as they got previously. And you, citizens of New Hope, aren't seeing a cent of it. Their budget increased spending $700,000. I'm not making it up. Go look on their website. Budget priorities for 2014. You'll, you'll, I'm sure they'll accuse me of making it up. But I'm not making it up. It's, it's written right there on their budget, 2014. Uh, you're going to see $700,000 in local spending. Their city manager got a 5% raise. This guy makes six figures. And this isn't some poor guy who's, who's you know, uh, living hand to mouth that we have to increase the minimum wage for. No, uh, th this is a guy making six figures, got a 5% raise for the third year in a row. And basically the city council made comments, oh, well, he doesn't do anything wrong. He's just perfect. We, we just couldn't have a, be a better person. Yeah, so not only are you getting a property tax increase, they also raised your water bills 5%. You're going to get a 5% increase in your water bills. Now, think about that for a minute. You're getting an increase in your property taxes. Combine that with an increase in your water bills. At the same time, your city is getting more free money from the state of Minnesota. Of course, it's not free. It's your money recycled through the Fiscal Disparities Act and all that garbage at the state level. Uh, New Hope also has made a big, big deal. They're doing so much development now that they need to hire another assistant community development director. Well, the community development director, my friends, already makes damn near six figures. That position pays nearly that. And now they have to have an assistant, and of course that position will stay. 
It will stay even when they don't have a lot of development. It will stay no matter what. That position will remain. They want to keep it. They're using this to justify hiring it. They're hiring more police officers. Uh, I mean, uh, it's incredible. Now, also, uh, the legislature passed uh, a sales tax exemption for uh, cities. Now, it's a little confusing, and it's kind of a stupid law. Um, I agree with the concept behind it, because why should we be paying sales tax if it's our tax dollars? However, uh, one of the problems with that is that cities are saving this money and they're keeping it and spending it. New Hope is guessing that they're going to spend, they're going to save $54,000 with, sorry I'm talking fast folks, but there's a lot of info I got to get out to you in a short amount of time. But they're spending, uh, they're taking that $54,000 and they're just spending it. They're just going to blow it. You know, they're, they're not even, um, they're not giving any of that back to you as citizens, taxpaying citizens of that city. I'll tell you, you people know I've got to wake up. And I would even take it a step further. If you look at their development, at the amount of high-density housing that they are pushing in New Hope, they are pushing a, a new apartment building on 62nd and Broadway. They're pushing it right by the golf course. They're pushing it by the city center. They are pushing it over on Medicine Lake Road. They want you crammed in so they can get every nickel out of every blade of grass, everything, every maximum amount of tax dollars because they just will keep on spending and spending and spending. So you people in New Hope, you got to wake up. You need, we need some new people on this city council. I mean, I don't know that I've seen, I really don't know if I have seen uh, a vote that wasn't five to nothing in New Hope. I mean, they are thinking, I, I don't know if all five are sharing one brain. I don't know what's going on, but it is bad there. And we need some people who are going to shake things up. So if you're thinking about running in New Hope, you know who to contact. The guru of local government, me. Who else? Who else are you going to talk to uh, about running in New Hope? And we really need to get some change in there. Now I'm going to move on to a city that I know I've annoyed. And that's the city of Golden Valley. Hi, Golden Valley. Hi, City Council. I know you, you, you can't stop loving hearing from me. And I know that uh, th you think I'm a propagandist and all that good stuff. Of course, I just report things you say at council meetings. I report things you do, things you vote on, but somehow I'm the propagandist. Well, they made some interesting comments at their budget meeting in December. And yes, I know I've gone over this before, but ladies and gentlemen, like I explained, I have to, because of the, just the, the sheer volume of this audience, I've got to go back and explain what we're doing and tell these same stories a couple more times. And, 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 and you'll, you'll get it. You people who are just tuning in for the first time, you'll understand when I'm done here. And, and you folks, too, who've been watching this program for a long time will understand what I, why I have to reiterate this stuff. Now, Gold Valley, okay, was getting no local government aid in 2013. They're getting 219000 in 2014. So you'd think we'd get a property tax cut. Oh, no, 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 no. Spending and property tax increases will go up $314,000 or 2.57%. But what happened? What happened to all those years, Golden Valley, that you've been blaming the lack of LGA for why you have to raise property taxes? Now all of a sudden you get it, and of course you don't lower people's property taxes. You turn around and spend it. And I love the comments from the council. You know, I don't know if there's a prize handed out to um, you, every council meeting that is on the budget, you will hear council members say the same things. I know what they're going to say before they say them. Well, you know, we really worked hard. Boy, and city staff really worked hard. And boy, we asked a lot of questions. And well, I'm sorry, is, is working hard, is there a prize for working hard? Is there a prize for asking questions? Isn't that what you should be doing? Working hard is a minimum, bottom basement, minimum requirement of somebody. So I don't really care if you worked hard. That really is irrelevant. I don't care if you asked questions. The question is, are you going to do something or not? But what they want, they want little points. Well, you know, we worked hard, we asked questions. So, you know, this, this, is, this is the best we can come up with. Well, really, well, I want to call out a few people. Steve Schmidgall. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. If it isn't, who cares? He knows who he is. Um, went on and on and on about how uh, 
they've been frugal and conservative in Golden Valley. Now, I don't know if this guy has a difference, uh, definition of frugal than I do. I don't know if uh, his definition of conservative is different than me, but I want to quote him here. Uh, listen to this. We, we made some tough choices this year. There are things we'd have liked to have added that we weren't able to add. Oh, I see. So if you couldn't add something to the budget because you didn't have the money, that was a tough decision. Well, you know, I'd like to buy a boat myself personally. I'd like a new car. Guess what? I can't afford them. So is it a hard decision to not go out there? But no, I don't have the money to. So how hard is that? But again, wait, you want points for that? Uh, Paula Pentel went on about how uh, Golden Valley doesn't have a hockey rink and they don't have a dog park, I don't think. Maybe it wasn't dog park. They don't have a, uh, what else did she say? That doesn't matter. Oh, they don't have a pool. Well, you know, a pool, you know what a drain a pool is on a city? And who says people in Golden Valley? You know, Minneapolis has a hockey rink. So does Plymouth. So does New Hope. Why can't you go there and use their hockey rink? Why does every city need one? But I guess, I guess that's evidence of their frugality. Hey, we didn't build a pool that we use two months out of the year. So that's an evidence of how frugal we are. Now, of course, when it comes to Golden Valley, you know, every city has a, just sort of a champion that I like to quote. And I think the mayor of Golden Valley has taken former Mayor Bowman's place as the person that I um, have to quote the most. And I either laugh or cry. You know, President Lincoln once said, you know, he stubbed his toe. He didn't know whether he should laugh or cry. I'm not sure when I hear Mayor Shep Harris speak whether I should laugh or cry. It is painful to listen to. But the mayor, um, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't laugh, but made some interesting comments uh, about um, voting for or against this budget. And I'm going to start with the funniest. <laughs> I hate to start with the funniest and work my way down, but it's kind of what he shed, said first. I've been in this job for two years, quoting the mayor, and I actually think I'm growing more, <laughs> growing more fiscally conservative. Really? You know what, Mayor Harris, if we hung you for being a conservative, we'd hang an innocent person. There's absolutely nothing in this budget whatsoever that is conservative. Tell me how property tax increases, more employees, in fact, one of the things they're doing is that they are hiring this building inspector in Gold Valley. And don't worry, uh, when I talk about this Sun Post, you can report on it three weeks later after I break the story how it usually works. Um, they're hiring a building inspector to go around uh, house to house and write people up for citations. Total violation of the Fourth Amendment. And they made room for that in their budget. So they are going after uh, people that you, to uh, find little things wrong with their homes and uh, maybe things they can't afford to fix up at the moment. And they are uh, going after them for uh, little violations, and it'll be a revenue generator for the city, so they'll take it and spend some more money in here. And Mayor Harris, you'll be glad to know, calls that an innovation. That's government's way of innovating. Um, also, I'm going to quote uh, Mayor Harris. Uh, <laughs> we're uh, building new playgrounds in Golden Valley. Quote, I like, I call it, the Parks Revival, five new playgrounds that are going to be coming out. Those playgrounds are tired, they're old, they're dangerous for our children, and if we have to pay another 2.9% in our taxes for the safety of our kids, oh, I believe it's important. You know, I got an idea for Mayor Harris. I think District 281 ought to hire uh, Mayor Harris as a consultant uh, because it would do it for the children. Pulls out. You know somebody's desperate when they pull out the do it for the children card. Got to do it for the children. Do it for the children. Uh, the children are going to die if we don't tear these parks down and rebuild them. Total, you, you think I'm full of propaganda? That's beyond propaganda. I mean, it, 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 you know, if, if you really want new parks, Mayor Harris, there's ways to do it. There's ways that local people can do that. You could have cut some money out of another part of the budget if that was so important. But you, you did the easy thing. The easy thing, which is to uh, put off everything until next year. You know, uh, do what you can to just slide by and then put off hard decisions until next year. Now, that brings me to Crystal. And I have to say, uh, first let me say that I am very disappointed in their budget. I, I was really not happy 
with the final product. And I still am sitting here two months later stunned that this budget passed unanimously. And I say that despite my respect for Councilman Casey Peak and Julie Deschler and Mayor Adams, I think in other areas they have done well. I think the budget was a disaster, and I, I don't back off that. And um, once again, Crystal got a jack up in their water bills, 5% uh, will be paying. I think it has something to do with this New Hope Golden Valley Crystal Agreement of Emergency. It's supposed to be emergency uh, water fund, but I think, I think it's going to be much more than just an emergency fund is my guess. Whatever it is, it's not very transparent. They're talking about jacking up liquor and beer license fees, which, what's the difference between raising my water bill and raising my taxes? I mean, you're just getting revenue from a different source. And despite the increase in local government aid, uh, we are getting a 1.07% increase in our property tax levy. So nothing was cut. Everybody got a raise. I don't know why. I, I'm really struggling to find something positive in that budget. And after looking at it for two months, I still can't find it. So um, just a, a real disappointment there. And again, I think what happens is in these budget talks, and I think this is one of the drawbacks for doing a yearly budget. You know, the, the state, for example, does a two-year budget. Uh, the locals do a one-year budget. And I think they get to a point where uh, they say, okay, 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 let's just get through this year. Let's just, just do what we have to do to get through uh, this calendar year, and then ah, we'll deal with whatever next year. And then next year comes and, ah, let's just, you know, we, we did this and we did this and we moved some money around and from this fund to that fund. Well, we'll, 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 deal with, we'll, with, uh, uh, we'll deal with whatever next year. And I think that's a real big weakness here is that, is that short-term planning always gets in the way of long-term planning. And the people in Crystal will tell you they have this goal to get off local government aid. Uh, now it's the year 2018, of course, five years from now. I, I heard that five years ago, though, that they were going to get, you know, and I think that is going to be the justification for darn near everything. And I think it's the right move philosophically to not rely on the state. But if you're going to get off local government aid, City of Crystal, you can't operate the way you are. It's not possible. You can't have the same level of government. You can't keep buying property. You can't keep giving out raises. You can't, you can't pay people six figures. If you're going to get rid of that $1.7 million, it's not just going to disappear. And my fear is it's slowly going to be dumped on the taxpayers. It's slowly over time, you'll get a little bit of an increase and a little bit of an increase and a little bit of an increase. And then that will be, getting off LGA will be the justification for it. So... Fairly worried about that. Now, as bad as those cities were, brings me to Robbinsdale. Um, I'll tell you, this is, this is depressing. Um, here is, <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> Robbinsdale <laughs> got an increase in local government aid, 448000 bucks. That's not chump change. Uh, Robbinsdale is about a $6 million operating budget, so half a million bucks is not nothing. I mean, that's damn near 10%. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's, not, very, uh, uh, that's not a low amount. Um, however, they are increasing city spending by $384,627, $627, and that is a 4.6% increase in spending. So while they're getting more, quote, free money. They are increasing spending 4.6%. Actually, their overall spending is at $8.8 .8 million. I thought it was $6 million. I don't know where I... I'm reading too many figures, my friends. So scratch that. Scratch that. But $8.8 .8 is, their, is, their, is their overall spending. And here is the new necessary government that they are spending. This, this stuff is necessary here in the city of Robbinsdale. Listen to this. This is where your money's going. A new city website. Oh, yippee. And yes, their, their city website is god-awful. It's terrible. It just looks ter terrible. It's awful. But is it really that much money to change up the city website? I mean, I don't think that that's uh, too much. Tree replacement. Of course, they don't say where, they don't say how much, nothing like that. 
Of course, we got another one, summer code enforcement. They're going to be writing more parking tickets. They're going to be examining how high your fence is and making sure it's not one centimeter or millimeter or a millionth meter higher than it's allowed in that city code. Of course, their city code is about that thick. <clears throat> um, they want a second license plate reader. So when you're sitting there at getting gas at, uh, at the uh, gas station or you're off eating somewhere, they can read, no, we can read twice as many license plates. Make sure you don't have a, you don't have a parking ticket or you're not late on some child support payments and come back and nail you. Software updates. Oh, they get to update software. Um, I guess that's necessary government as well. And of course, every employee stays. They all get a raise. Same as everywhere else. Now, the council's comments on this were tough to listen to. They were very hard to listen to because basically they praised the governor and the legislature for giving them this free money that they can now spend. Of course, no concept, typical local government, no concept that that free money is not free, that that comes out of somebody's pocket, that that is money sent to the state, and the state takes money out and takes that out, sends it back. I don't know if anybody in Ramsdale understands it. I'm not sure. Um, you'd think they'd be smarter than that, but then again, I have higher expectations. Dan Rogan, I want to share his comments with you regarding their budget. Quote, it's a chance for us to say thank you to the governor and thank you to the legislature for having the ability and the wherewithal to come up with revenue in, that, in ways that aren't on the backs of property taxpayers through increased income taxes. Well, let me ask a question, Mr. Rogan. Do people who pay property taxes not pay income taxes? I pay both. You raise my income taxes, have it sent to the state, and have it sent to the city, that's probably a net loss for me. Now, I know, in Robinsdale's budget, you're staring at Robinsdale's budget to the point where you can't see a forest in the trees. Maybe you don't understand that. But it is not free money to tax somebody somewhere else just so you can get a decrease in how much. You know, and here, let, me ask, let me ask you a question. How come you can't cut spending? Why is it? Why can't we have one year? where the city actually takes in less. Why? What's the problem? You know, if, if, if I don't uh, come up with a budget uh, in, in my house and say, okay, well, here's the rent, here's blah, blah, blah. I'm going to spend $3,000 that month, that, that month. And then I go into my boss and give him a bill. Okay, what does my boss say? My boss tells me to go... Go straddle a goat. I'm not... You're, you're getting what you're getting, and then then you have to make up for that. You've got to figure out uh, how to, to, to live within that. But these cities, they figure out what they want to spend, then they figure out how they're going to get it. And if they don't get all the free money they think that they're going to, well, then that entitles them to just dump the cost off on you. Now, George Selman comes next. Mr. Mr. Streetcars. Um, and listen to this. He calls for a, a, a different tax. Remember what we've... And I've talked about this before, okay? I'm going to say it again. Never open up revenue streams to government. They never, ever, ever, ever go away. They never do. Now listen to what Mr. Selman would like the legislature and the governor to do. Of course, if I were the governor and the legislature, I'd tell Mr. Selman to do his own job. But he says, one of the things that a lot of governors are fighting for is the ability to apply sales tax to internet purchases. So you have, if you have an opportunity to support these governors, please take it. Yeah, hey, governor, can you please tax me some more? You know, when I want to buy my, my, uh, um, you know, my Viagra or hemorrhoid cream on the internet instead of going to the local store, please tax me for it. I feel so bad that I'm not paying it. Not only is he calling for increased taxes, it's an increased regressive tax. It's a, it's a tax on another tax poor poorer people are going to end up paying. You know, is there anything I can buy that is not going to get taxed? Is there anything I can buy that people like George Stel Selman won't stick their nose in? So, you know, in fact, uh, Bill Blonigan, he said, I don't want to quote him. There's no points, the same damn thing. 
And it was only uh, Pat Beckin and uh, Mayor Murphy were the only people who didn't slobber all over themselves um, thanking the governor for, for how, how grateful they were that $3 billion in taxes were raised at the state level so they could uh, get some free money to spend uh, locally. Now, also Brooklyn Park. Only got a couple minutes, but I can get this in. Brooklyn Park, Mayor Jeff Lundy, Democrat Brooklyn Park, uh, Mr. Pro Public Private Partnership, Mr. Um, Bot No Transit, Mr. Taking Free Money from Target and from Olympus, uh, Mr. I Think I'm Going to Be the Next County Commissioner. Yes, Mayor Lundy, I know you're aiming for Mike Opat's seat. Don't think that you supporting Opat over Chris Raines, even though Mr. Raines helped you get elected, don't think that went unnoticed on this program. Of course, nobody else is going to report on it but us. We know what you're scheming to do. <clears throat> $1.9 million. That was the increase in Brooklyn Park's levy. In fact, Mayor Lundy even went further calling um, LGA a one-time, what did he call it? A one-time, uh, uh, oh, damn it, I can't think of it, but it, um, oh, uh, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll think of it as soon as the show's over. A one-time big payment uh, that, that, uh, Oil companies always claim, but uh, he acted again as though that money was his, he was entitled to it, and a $1.9 million spending increase in one city, okay, one city gets a $1.9 million spending increase. And uh, again, what's, what's going to happen here? Who's going to stop this? Where is the grounds? Where are you people? We need an army of people to run for office, to oppose this stuff, to join people like me, and go after what's really going on here. I mean, let me tell you something. Never underestimate what a small group of people can do. Never underestimate what a group of people who are, have a single-minded focus can go, oh, I know what Mayor Lundy called it. Oh, I knew I'd think of it. Windfall profit. That's what he called local government aid. A windfall profit. Now, if he were an oil company and said that, what would these people be saying? You know, what would they be saying? They'd be all over, all over them about it. But when a, when a mayor refers to your tax dollars as a windfall profit, there's not a peep from anybody, well, that is, except this program and our blog. Now, I want you to check it out. Community Solutions, mn.wordpress.com. Email this show. And tell me how great I am, how much, how terrible I am, how much weight I have to lose, whatever. Just get involved. I'm begging you, folks. Community Solutions, join our Facebook page. Ask to join. I'm one of the administrators. I'll put you on there. We want debate. We want those things on there. We want people engaged in their community. And that is where I have to leave it. We will see you next week. I know you'll be here. Next week it is, my friends.